This week, the latest on NASA's moon launch, the Queen's funeral, Harry Potter's coin, India's running doctor, and deep sea blue goo. Over here! Hey, 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 hey listen up! No, 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 Newsy! Newsy Palooza! Hello and welcome to Newsy Palooza, the news pool for curious kids and adults. It's a packed episode we have for you, as it's been a busy week. After cancelling twice, NASA says it will attempt to launch the Artemis 1 moon rocket on the 27th of September. We'll also give you the lowdown on the most epic funeral of the century. Also, real coins are being made with the image of Master Magician Harry Potter. In India, a surgeon stuck in terrible traffic decides to go the extra mile or two to treat a patient. And scientists scratch their head at mysterious balls of blue goop deep at sea in the Caribbean. I'm your host, Leela Shiv Shankar Prickett, and as ever, I'm joined by... Me, Lindy, the big story explainer and sound effects finder, otherwise known as Leela's Mama. <laughs> you said it. All right, then. Let's dive on in with the, the big, big new story of the week. So you've heard the phrase, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, right? Oh, yeah. Or that other favorite of yours, a winner never quits and a quitter never wins. Oh, yes. That's a family favorite, in fact. Thank you very much, Uncle Mays. Well, it's good advice to live by, so much so that the world's leading space agency is doing just that. Yes, as we've reported on Newsy Palooza before, NASA is hoping to send a rocket called Artemis 1 to the moon. Also known as the Space Launch System Vehicle, it's the most powerful rocket ever developed by NASA and is designed to send astronauts and their equipment back to the moon. For the first time in a long time, like half a century long, the last manned mission was Apollo 17 in 1972. Okay, okay, it's not that long ago. So to get this rocket up in space, three million liters of super cold liquid hydrogen and oxygen will burn in four big engines underneath the vehicle, thrusting it to space. But when they tried doing that earlier this month... There was a hydrogen leak. And a few weeks before that, there was another technical issue that meant the mission was... Mission aborted. In other words, canceled. So to make sure everything is in order to try again, NASA is planning to perform a televised chirogenic demonstration test. A what a? Chirogenics, which is the branch of physics that deals with the production and effects of very low temperatures. <laughs> Meaning they'll load super cold liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen into the rocket to confirm if the hydrogen leak has been repaired properly. If so, Tuesday, September 27th, it'll be the go, go, go blast off. And if not, the next backup launch is scheduled for October 2nd. And if that doesn't work... Then they'll try, try again. Because a winner never quits and a quitter never wins. Indeed. Now. The Queen of Britain was laid to rest in the biggest and most majestic funeral of the century. Kings and queens. Sheikhs and sultans. Archbishops. Presidents and prime ministers. And more than 10,000 police officers. Along with 1,500 soldiers. Plus hundreds of thousands of people lining the streets and millions of people watching on television. Here in St. George's Chapel. Where if not said, billions by some estimates. All to say farewell to someone, Queen Elizabeth II. Never mind the 300,000 people who stood in line for hours and hours to walk past her coffin and pay their respects. 
as she lay in state for five days. Including soccer star David Beckham, who, if you didn't hear, waited 13 hours to also pay his respects. That's a lot of respects. Telling me, Britain loved their queen. Her calm and dignified presence has given us confidence to face the future as she did, with courage and with hope. Now begins the reign of King Charles III. All eyes are on the king. With many, however, starting to ask if Britain still needs such a large, well-paid royal family in a modern country. Hey, Mama. Hey, Leela. That music sounds very familiar. (laughs) <laughs> That's true. It's the national anthem of Britain. That's why you hear them sing God Save the Queen, and soon it'll be God Save the King. But the melody is also used for My Country Tis of Thee. <clears throat> I don't sing as well as you, dear. <laughs> also known as America. I knew it. <laughs> and did you know the tiny country of Liechtenstein also uses the melody? as their national anthem melody. And for a time, the melody was also used as a national anthem in Germany, Russia, and Switzerland, though not anymore. Meowzers, that's a lot of anthems for one melody. What's that? I'll tell you what, that's the halftime bell, which means it's time to hear what's making news around the rest of the world. Hold on tight. It's Around Around the the World world in 80 80 Seconds. seconds. Hold tight! Protests break out all over Iran after a girl was killed for not wearing her hijab or headscarf properly. Large crowds are cheering as women set their hijabs on fire in defiance against the moral police in the conservative country. In Japan, more than 5 million people are being asked to evacuate their homes as a super typhoon, what hurricanes are called in Asia, slams into the south of the country. Nearby, Taiwan is cleaning up after a 6.8 magnitude earthquake struck the island. At least three buildings and several bridges collapsed. Roads were damaged and trains were derailed. On the other side of the world, Hurricane Fiona knocks out power to residents on the island of Puerto Rico, with intense flooding expected to follow. And in Europe, archaeologists in the country of Georgia say the 1.8 million year old human tooth they found proves the region was home to one of the earliest prehistoric human settlements outside of Africa. Thank you so much for that. Wait for it. Whippity wobbity zippity zappity rap of what's making headlines elsewhere in the world, Mama. Now it's the ace part of our podcast. That stands for Art, Art Culture, Culture and Entertainment. Entertainment. Darling. Darling. Hear ye, hear ye. All Harry Potter fans with a bit of pocket money, this one is for you. No, it's not another book or movie, sadly. Or better, Hogwarts costumes for Halloween. But money, money, money. And not magic money either, but the real stuff. Britain's Royal Mint. Those are the people who make money. Like, literally, make coins and bills. Yes, that's true, literally. Well, they're going to have their hands full soon, changing over the money with Queen Elizabeth's face to King Charles's face. But first, they're spinning out some fanciful coins for Harry Potter lovers. That's right. Royal Mint has unveiled a 50 pence Harry Potter coin as part of a new collection celebrating 25 years since the first book was published in the UK. And when we say 50 pence, well, British money is called pounds and 100 pence makes up one pound. So 50 pence is about the equivalent of half a dollar. A spellbinding souvenir, I'd say. 
All right, now lots of towns and cities all over the world have horribly bad traffic, which of course is what podcasts are for, right? Well, one city with super bad traffic is here in India, Bengaluru, which I can totally vouch for. But you'll never believe this story. Kindness corner. Cool. They did what? Seriously? What? How cool is that? No way. Cool. Yes, this is a traffic jam story with a super cool happy ending. And since it's Bengaluru, let's cut across to our correspondents, twins Adyant and nearby Singh Chuan, who are standing by in the traffic jam city to tell us more. Yes, here in Bengaluru, you can be stuck in traffic for hours. It's a total bore. So boring. And life-threatening too. And frustrating. At least it was for a patient of surgeon Dr. Govind Dandakumar. The patient was all ready for a gallbladder surgery when the doctor got stuck in bad traffic. Total gridlock. You see, it's monsoon here. And that means there's been a lot of rain. The heavy rain caused a very bad stretch of highway, just around a corner from us, in fact, to become partially flooded. The doctor was stuck, and his patient was waiting, and waiting. Well, thank goodness, the doctor is fit and in shape. Yes, with traffic showing no signs of easing, the surgeon jumped out of his car and ran, and ran. 1.8 1.8 miles, in fact, making it just in time to treat his patient. Impressive. In Bangalore, I'm Adiant. And I'm nearby. And, and we, we are, are reporting, reporting for Newsy Paloozy. Thanks a lot, you guys. Step right up, step right up, step right up. Have a go look at the machine. The lucky dip machine. What's it going to be today? What's it going to be today, eh? An oddball, no doubt. An oddball, no doubt. Breaking news, there's unidentified mysterious blue goop. As in goopy sea balls at the bottom of the Caribbean. Uh, excuse me? This is not made up, folks. Unidentified blue goo creatures are mystifying scientists after they spotted the motionless blobs on the seafloor near the Virgin Islands. Not just one, but several. You want to know what they look like? Well, imagine one of those stress relief balls with soft, spiky bumps all over it. But you know, gooey. Oh, I know what you mean. Well, maybe that's what they are at the bottom of the sea. Except they're gooey. Oh, I see. So far, scientists have just seen them from afar, from the camera on board a remotely operated vehicle. Right now, they think they could be soft coral or sea sponge, or maybe even tunicate. Whatever that is. Oh, that bit I do know. Tunicate is gelatinous marine invertebrate. Gelatinous as in jelly. Marine as in the ocean, invertebrate as in no spine. Sometimes referred to as sea squirts. Sweet. Maybe. How'd you like to step on one of those then? Ew. No thank you. Of course, we'll have a link in our transcript so you can see the blue goo for yourself. And it's time to wrap up the podcast with the the top top five facts facts heard today. today. Fab fact number one. After cancelling twice, NASA says it will attempt to launch the Artemis 1 moon rocket on the 27th of September. It's designed to finally take astronauts back to the moon. When was NASA's last manned mission to the moon? 1972. Fab fact number two. And to make sure everything is in order for the rocket launch, NASA is planning to perform a televised cryogenic demonstration test. What's cryogenics? The branch of physics that deal with the production and effects of very low temperatures. Fab fact number three. 
As the UK's Queen is laid to rest, the national anthem God Save the Queen was played at her epic funeral. Which country also uses the melody as a national anthem today? Liechtenstein Fab Fact Number 4 And which countries used to use the UK national anthem melody as their national anthem in the past? Germany, Russia, and Switzerland. Fab Fact Number 5 Mysterious blue goo deep at the bottom of the Caribbean Sea stumps scientists. Some think they could be soft coral or sea sponge or maybe even tourniquet. Which is what? Gelatinous marine invertebrae, sometimes referred to as sea squirts. Don't forget, if you want to test yourself later on, then go to the Lucky Dip page of our website, newsypalooze.com. That's palooze as in a pool, P-O-O-L-O-O-Z-I dot com, and take the quiz online in your own time. And that almost brings us to the end of this episode of Newsy Palooze. But first... Thank you so much to listener Naomi, who sent us a fab email saying... When I go to bed, I listen to Newsy Palooze to chill out. And sometimes in the day when I'm bored. Newsy Palooze is entertaining and I love it. Oh, I love it too. Thank you so much, Naomi. That has completely made our week. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And anyone else who wants their email read out loud, then drop us a line to contact at newsypalooze.com. That's newsy pool loozy, as in a pool of news. I repeat, P O O L O O Z I dot com. <laughs> okay, what are you waiting for? Alrighty then, see you next week in the happy, splashy, giant, newsy pie loozy. Mm-hmm.